Hello and welcome to the last episode of Let's Play Halo 3. For real this time. This video is going to be a roundup of some bonus content. Uh, just stuff like secrets, easter eggs, uh, just anything I didn't get a chance to show off anywhere else in the LP. We're going to get started right at the beginning of the game uh, with some classic Sergeant Johnson alternate voice lines. Uh, during the LP, we saw what happens on Normal, uh, but it turns out there's a different line on Heroic, and then six of them on Legendary. We must go. The brutes have our scent. Then they must love the smell of hero. We must go. The brutes have our scent. Then they must love the smell of badass. We must go. The brutes have our scent. Then they must love the smell of badass. And I left a little present for you, Arbiter, and I'm walking away. Ha ha ha! We must go. The brutes have our scent. They must love the scent of a real man. We must go. The brutes have our scent. And they must love the scent of testosterone. We must go. The brutes have our scent. They must love the smell of Bulgari. Yeah, I'm doing a little product placement. I gotta get paid too. <laughs> All right. Uh, later on in the level, as you're wandering through the jungle, it may have struck you as odd that there's no wildlife around. Uh, the jackals don't count. But if you climb up these cliffs, you can find uh, these guys. Uh, and these are known as the missing lynx. And these horrifying early hominids are uh, monkeys with the face of Marcus Leto, who was a creative art director for Bungie on the Halo games. Now this family here is the, I guess, main instance of the missing links, but there's actually a couple other places you can find them. Uh, over here next to the river, there is one of them climbing a tree. And then at the very end of the level, uh, there's another one climbing the cliffs over here. Next up, we're going to take a look at the beginning of Crow's Nest. Uh, there's all these computers, and you'd think at some point something interesting would be shown on them. Oh, wait, did you see that? Let's, uh, let's take another look. It turns out that for half a second every two or three minutes, Cortana will actually show up on some of the computer screens in this level, which is very, very interesting, actually. Uh, next up, we have some more secret dialogue. Um, this one's later on in Crow's Nest. Uh, and this was actually done by some of the original Red vs. Blue guys. There are three different conversations. Uh, so we're going to show Normal, and then Heroic, and then Legendary. Hey, open up! Password, please! You gotta be kidding me! What password? The password so we don't open the door for brutes! Do I sound like a brute to you? Well, you could be held prisoner by brutes. If I was held prisoner by brutes and knew the password, then the brutes could just force me to tell you the password and you'd open the door for them. Okay, well now I'm definitely not gonna open the door. But we need ammo! Well, why don't you go ask your brute buddies then? Hey, open up! Password! What? Need the password! You gotta be kidding me! What password? Password! They gave it out at the staff meeting 15 minutes ago! Meeting? What meeting? I was out here! Not supposed to let anyone in without it! If the staff meeting just ended, no one outside is gonna know the freaking password! Now open up! We need ammo and the chief is out here! Does he know the password? He wasn't at the meeting either! Hey! Open up! What's the password? Password? Oh man, I forgot. Forgot what? I forgot the password. See, that was almost right. Uh, see, the password begins with I forgot, but ends differently. 
Uh, try again. No, I mean I forgot the password. Uh, okay, see, you, you got it wrong again. See, you said the same thing as last time. I'm being serious. I don't know the password. I don't know. See, you changed the first part. See, that, that part was the right part. See, now you got the whole thing wrong. No, I forgot what the password is, and I just need you to open the door. All right, come on, man. Now you're just guessing. On the Earth levels of Halo 3, there's all sorts of debris all over the place, but on the level The Storm, there's a very interesting one you can find. A missing persons flyer. File number 117343 for Jason Jones, missing since November 9th. Uh, Jason Jones is actually one of the co-founders of Bungie and the project lead for Halo 1 and 2. Uh, he took the crunch time and release and reception of Halo 2 pretty hard uh, and ended up taking a sabbatical. But he did eventually come back to help out for Halo 3. Next up we're going to have a secret that's actually pretty reminiscent of one from Halo 1. Uh, and this one is time sensitive, so you have to do this part quite quickly. It also requires you to steal a ghost. Now if you do this quickly enough, uh, you can come over here and actually use the ghost to climb up the mountain. And up here, we're gonna find a marine. A hidden marine who just kinda stands up here and doesn't do anything else. Uh, you do have to be quick, eventually he despawns, uh, but only if you don't see him. Uh, if you come up here and engage with him, he will stay forever. I have to imagine he's here for a similar reason as the guy from uh, 343 Guilty Spark, the swamp level of Halo 1. Uh, also on the level The Covenant, uh, there's going to be another easter egg pretty reminiscent of one from Halo 1. Uh, we actually talked about it in the last level. Uh, this is the hidden music cue for the Siege of Madrigal. There was a an instance of the hidden music cue in Halo 1 if you climbed up the pyramid, the control room, although I didn't show that specific one off. Uh, in Halo 3, it's up here. But you know, the citadel here is symmetrical. So it turns out there is a another secret if you go to the other side of the citadel. Uh, this one's a little bit different, uh, and it takes a while for these lines to show up. You have to wait several minutes in between. I am a monument to all Marty's sins. Hello, 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 hello. Happy Easter, Marty. JMC Paul, Bart so totally fired. OMG, this game needs more guitar wank. Am I right? And now we're gonna move on to the Warthog run at the very end of the game. Uh, yet again, this is actually reminiscent of a Halo 1 easter egg. Right before you get to the ship, if you come over here, there is a grunt who the Arbiter is going to immediately kill. Uh, let's try that again. 
if we don't let the Arbiter kill that grunt, uh, and we go over next to him, he's got some stuff to say. Hey, demon! The jerk store called, and they're all out of you! Poor you! Stolen at the age of six and conscripted into the military! <sighs> okay, look, you let me live! I got the pistol! I'll be the bottom! I'll polish your boots! I'll polish your helmet! It's the gas! <laughs> when I'm on the gas, I don't know what I'm doing! <laughs> Since we're on the topic of the Warthog run, uh, there's a few more interesting things about it. And they all have to do with the fact that the Warthog is not your only option. Right at the very beginning of the vehicle section, if you go to the left instead of the right, uh, you can find a Mongoose. And it is entirely possible to do the whole thing in the Mongoose instead of the Warthog. Of course, the best thing about using the Mongoose is that you can get the Arbiter to ride on the back of it. Now, I think the uh, course, if you want to call it that, is sort of designed with the Warthog in mind. The Mongoose can definitely do it, but it's a little tricky. Uh, there are some handling issues with the mongoose. But I have to say, I just... I don't know. Same thing as we talked about when we uh, played the level of the Covenant. It's just... There's something really nice about the two guys riding the ATV together. You know, it's just a nice culmination of their friendship. Uh, and also, it can look awesome as hell. Now, the Mongoose isn't the only other vehicle option. Uh, if you play the level on co-op on Legendary Difficulty, and you come down here after Sergeant Johnson dies, you can find four ghosts and sometimes one swordfish. Now, you can definitely take these through the entire rest of the level, although you kind of have to do some combat with them first to get there, which is interesting. I had sort of forgotten that these showed up here and not later. The ghosts are a little bit better than the mongooses, uh, but they are also not your only other option. If you come over here right before you get to the point where the floor starts falling out, you can find two choppers. And, oh. See a swordfish. Uh, now there's only two choppers. So you can't have everybody on them if you were playing four player. Uh, but that's actually okay. The, the brute choppers are the hardest vehicle to do the vehicle section with. Uh, they don't always have the velocity to make the jumps. But what I find really, really cool about this is that if you were playing four player co-op, it is entirely possible to have one player driving the Warthog, one player driving the Mongoose, one player driving a Ghost, and the last player driving a Brute Chopper. Just a really fun time all around. And since I've got Swordfish here for co-op, uh, I did want to just show off the way some cutscenes change if you're playing in co-op. Most of the examples, they're relatively small changes. Uh, just the Arbiter hanging out in the background. But there's one really, really good example of an entire cutscene being, well, the same, but also different. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna just let this play, and that'll be the end of it. So thanks a lot for watching. See you guys next time. Chief, I'll round up our survivors. Fall back to the dawn. Chief.
Chip Master will do the same with the elites. Cortana's in there somewhere.